Oh, boy. Ah, not the way I wanted to come on here, man. I wanted to come here celebrating a win and to talk about how unconvincing Arsenal are. But Arsenal fans are going to have the last laugh right now. You know what I mean? But guys, let me, let me, say, let me say this. We only eight matches in. There's still 30 more to go. Season is still very, very young. But I'm not going to touch on the, the City Arsenal game right now. But you got to give them credit, man. You got to give credit when credit's due. So, guys, let's do a quick rundown of what all the English teams did in Europe this week. And then we get into the Premier League results of this weekend. Match day eight. I'm a little bit under the weather. I don't know if you could hear it, but um, yeah, it happened really quick. Yesterday, I was feeling great. Went home, took a nap, got up, and I'm like, oh, man, I feel sick. So, Aston Villa defeated Zorinsky. A goal to nil, courtesy of a late goal by John McGinn. 94th minute, Europa Conference League, and Aston Villa, they are, even with that win, they're at the bottom of their group after two matches, which is crazy. That group is nuts. Everyone has three points after two matches and Villa are at the bottom. So being that Una Emery is the Europa League, you know, he 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 he, he loves these competitions. I think they'll bounce back and they'll do well, but good win for Aston Villa bouncing back from match day one. In terms of the Europa League guys, Brighton and Marseille played to a 2-2 draw in that game. You had um, Chancel Mbemba, 19th minute. Jordan Veritu, 20th minute. And then Pascal Gross and Jao Pedro scored goals to give Brighton a point. So Brighton are actually at the bottom of that group as well. With one point after two played. Ajax Athens, Marseille, Ajax are one, two, and three in the group. So the Serbian and his boys, you know. I think they'll do okay in the group. They might, they, they may go through to the next round or go down to the Conference League. But um, they played well today. They definitely did against Liverpool. I'll get to that. So West Ham beat Freiburg two goals to one in that game. Lucas Paqueta eight minute. Salai in the 49th and Naya Fagued with the winner in the 66. West Ham on top of their group. Six points and Freiburg second, Olympiacos third, and Baka Topola, they are fourth in the group. So we still do have more teams from the Premier League. And of course, Liverpool. Liverpool two, Union Saint Gilloa nil. So I started watching a little piece of this game and then I'm like, nah, what am I doing? Liverpool should be beating these teams. You see what I mean? So why waste my time watch these matches? So Ryan Gravenberg in the 44th minute and Diego Jota in the 92nd to give Jürgen Klopp's men a pretty convincing 2-0 win. Those are all the teams, right? Yeah, I think that's it. So Brighton, Liverpool, Aston Villa, and West Ham in the Europa League competitions and... In terms of the Champions League, man. Woo! Damn. Wow. Had some good results here. We had some good results. Man City 3, Leipzig 1. That was an away game for City. Foden in the 25th. Luis Openda in the 48th. And then Julian Alvarez with an 84th minute goal. That was a really good goal. And Jeremy Duku in the 92nd. To give Man City a fight and win. It wasn't as convincing as it should be. But it was a fight and win. And I'm happy for that. And City on top of the, the table. Well, the group with two wins and two. Six points. Leipzig a second with three points. And we also have Young Boys with three points. Savin, no, one point. And Zvezda with one point as well. So, great result for Manchester City. Not so much a great result against Wolves and now again this weekend against Arsenal. So it's fair to say that this is unlike Man City. And you could say that my team is struggling. You know what I mean? So the big one, man, Newcastle United 4, PSG 1. 
And one time it was 3-0 to Newcastle and I was like, damn. I tuned into the game. I wasn't like, I wasn't watching it from the start, but I tuned in and I was like, what the heck am I seeing here? Newcastle are putting freaking tot um, Tottenham, PSG to the sword. I was like, I couldn't believe it. Dembele, Mbappe, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, whoa, what is going on? Just a couple weeks ago, Newcastle were like really struggling and they bounced back really well. So Miguel Almiron, 17th minute, Dan Byrne in the 39th, Sean Longstaff in the 50th, Luca Hernandez pulled one back in the 56th and PSG, you know, they had a little glimpse of hope. But Fabian Shaw with a good goal in the 91st minute put the game to bed. 4-1 over PSG. So that is nuts. That is nuts, man. I don't think anyone would have predicted that result. Look, Newcastle could beat PSG. They did. You know what I'm saying? But many would not have pre you know, predicted that result. So Newcastle on top of the group with four points. PSG, three, second. AC Milan with two draws, third. And Dortmund at the bottom with one point. So great result, man. Congrats to Newcastle. They are back amongst the big boys. That will send a very, very clear message. So, the other two results aren't so great for the other Premier League teams, guys. Because um, both Arsenal and Man United lo lost their games. So, Lons 2, Arsenal 1. Gabriel Jesus to the 14th minute. Thomasson 25th. And Wahi in the 69th to give Lons an upset win over Arsenal. So... Go to win there, but give Arsenal the credit for bouncing back against Manchester City. And one of the biggest shocks of the match week, Man United 2, Galatasaray 3. They did bounce back late through some McTominay goals this weekend, but still, they were about to get embarrassed again at Old Trafford. But um, good win for Galatasaray. Hard luck for United. This game, Rasmus Hullian, 17. Zaha, former United man. 23rd, Hullion again in the 67th, then Octokoglu, 71st, Casemiro got sent off at 2-2, and then Mauri Cardi with the win, nice chip in the 81st, Galatasaray won the game. So, in terms of the, um, the standings in the group, Man United at the bottom, no points in two, lost to Bayern, and they lost to... Of course, Galatasaray. Bayern on top at six points. Galatasaray second on four. And Copenhagen with one point in the group. So that would do it for the Premier League teams in Europe. I did make a video talking, a, a live stream talking about that. Talking about some of the games. But um, just wanted to touch on that before we get into match day eight. So, yeah. And guys, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I don't want to... Say, oh, you know what, man? I'm going to do a stream later and then never stream. You see what I'm saying? So I just want to come talk to you guys and just get it out of the way. Because if I promise myself that I'm going to stream, I might go home. I'm feeling really tired or comfortable in the chair. And I'm like, I'm not going anywhere, man. You see what I mean? And then I don't want to keep procrastinating talking about these games. So let's talk. Let's go. Let's go. I'll be. I try to be as brief as possible. Let me let me say that. Not trying to be here forever. Luton won. Burnley two. That was in the middle of the week. So congrats to Burnley on their first win of the season. Luton Town did lose a goal to nil against Spurs. Excuse me. In this game, Eves Bissuma got sent off. Forty fifth minute. Well, fourth minute of the first half extra time got sent off for second yellow. Uh, I think that was a second yellow, right? I can't. Yeah, I think so. I think so, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Van der Ven, I think his name is Martin. Martin Van der Ven? Mickey Van der Ven. Mickey. I think it's Mickey, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. He scored in the 52nd minute. That might have been his first Premier League goal for Spurs. So, really, you know, some pinball stuff in the box and he put it in. But I have to say that Richarlison had a great chance. Spurs had their chances. That they didn't put away. And Luton, they had a really great chance that they should have scored. Came close on a few occasions. 
But albeit not playing too badly, they lost the game to a 10-man Spurs. So Spurs still unbeaten in the league. They're doing well. I think them and Arsenal are the only unbeaten teams in the league right now, which is absolutely great in, in a, from a Spurs perspective. They're on top of the table, 20 points after eight games. So Big Ange, I, I have to say he surprised me. I didn't expect Tottenham to be this good. Especially without Kane. They did lose Loris, but I think it was time for Loris to go. But they lost Kane and they it, it doesn't look like it. You know what I'm saying? Son's in good form. Guys like, you know, Odogi, Poro, these guys, Van der Ven, these guys are in good form. The midfield of um Besuma and Papa Mata saw these guys are playing well. Madison's playing well. Kulosevsky's playing well. You know, the, the whole team is clicking. Let's just put it that way. They're clicking. And, and I think there's room for improvement as well. So, big win. Big win for Spurs. Got to give it to them. They have to scrap. Luton, they didn't play too badly. But they need to continue to try. Just keep trying. I think they're outside the relegation zone right now. They do have four points. And with a lot of teams around them not playing too, too well. Like the Burnley, Bournemouth, Sheffield. You know, it gives them little room to a little wiggle room if you if you know what i'm saying so you know be, be, best of luck to the hatters i remember when i started playing career mode again luton town was the first team i i, I played career mode with and that guy um peli Ruddock and panzer he was part of that team and that was back in 2015 when i started playing fifa career mode again so yeah congrats to spurs good win three points in the bag we're gonna keep it moving though definitely gonna keep it moving just brief thoughts and move so fulham three sheffield united one didn't watch this game i attempted to watch the highlights but i did fall asleep <laughs> at bobby reed 53rd minute anthony robinson own goal in the 68 own goal by will fotheringham in the 76 and william Put the nail in Sheffield United coffin in the 92nd minute. I did read that Chris Basham suffered a horrific injury in this game and he'll be out for some time. So hard luck to him. And yeah, Paul Heckenbottom goes into the second international window with his job on the line once again. So yeah. But Fulham dominated the game 20 shots, six on target, comparing to Sheffield's five, two on target. So pretty one-sided Sheffield look like they're doomed to go back down to the championship didn't spend enough money in investing a team and they're gonna pay the consequences as a result as for Fulham they continue to just build and grow in stature on the Marco Silva since they returned to the Premier League last season they don't want to be that yo-yo club that they've you know they, they held that reputation for over the last um, decade or so so well done well done to Fulham we are definitely going to keep it moving. But in terms of the standings, Fulham going to the international break on 12th with 11 points. That's solid. Very, very solid. Sheffield, rock bottom. No wins this season. And a single point to their name. So, best of luck to Sheffield United. So, definitely going to keep it moving, guys. And the next game, Burnley won. Chelsea 4. Burnley scored first in this game. Odebert, 15th minute. And then Alda Kiel with an own goal. Kind of freakish goal. Paul Palmer, penalty in the 50th minute. I'm surprised that he's on penalty duties. Maybe he does well in training. But wow, he's risen up the ranks really fast. Raheem Sterling in the 65th. And Nicholas Jackson in the 74th. Came off the bench there. I think, um, yeah. Definitely came off the bench. So, at Sterling, Broya, and Cole Palmer start in this game. So, very, very youthful team with the only standout old man being Thiago Silva. Robert Sanchez, a little bit up there, you know, maybe about 25, 26, if I'm not mistaken. But Chelsea showing potential there. I don't want to speak too fast, but they're, they're stringing together some very, very good results. As of late. So let's see if they could pick up where they left off. 
when the international break um, is over and we go into match day nine. So, you know, there were talks of Pochettino's, you know, questioning, questions being asked of Pochettino, but what can you expect of, you know, a team, a, a youthful team? You got to give them room to grow. You got to give them room to improve. Don't get me wrong, at times it's funny to laugh at some of the results, but you got to remember who's out there. They spent a lot of money, but this team is definitely one for the future. And let's see if they're going to fulfill their potential. As of Burnley, a big setback after the, 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 the win against Luton. They showed good signs, but to lose in this fashion after going ahead is unacceptable. I don't know. I don't know if companies like rotating his guys, but he didn't start the best possible team. Maybe he's still trying to figure out what the best 11 is for Sheffield going, um, for Burnley going forward. So hard luck there to Vincent Company and Burnley. But Chelsea would have always been one of the tougher games. So for the Blues, they are 11th with 11 points. Not bad, right? Not bad, not bad. Only one point behind Man United. <laughs> not bad. And for Burnley, four points, one win and the draw. They are 18th in the relegation zone. So for the November international window, they would want to jump out the relegation zone and that would show signs of progress. So guys, we are going to keep it moving. We're going to run through these games really, really fast. And <clears throat> the next one... Um, Man United 2, Brentford 1. Wow. Man United are lucky. They're lucky. They're lucky. Everything had to line up for them to walk away with anything from this game. And they walked away with all three points. But they were not good. Not good in the game at all, man. Not good. And you got to give Brentford a lot of credit for scoring that goal. Casemiro giveaway. Onana, you know, with with a with a blunder, I have to say, but he did redeem himself himself as the game went by with some brilliant saves to keep Brentford um, with only one goal. And late in the match, McTominay came off the bench, and he was prime Ronaldo Nazario with that brace, two extra time goals to give United a, a, a massive victory because they would have. I think they, they were staring down a third consecutive home loss, something that has not happened in a very long time. The questions being asked of Ted Hogg and McTominay just pulled through, man. And look, for United stature, they got to be better than this. They really got to be better than this. I know they had the likes of Maguire and Johnny Evans at the back, but I think um, I saw some stats that Maguire had like a really good game. You know what I'm saying? Johnny Evans, you know, they played three at the back because I don't think Ten Hag wanted to expose both Johnny Evans and Maguire. And it worked out in the end, man. Amrabat, you know, he was like a left wing back in the game. Dalla was right wing back. Casemiro started Mason Mount. So it's a big, it's a big result for United. Huge, huge result. Holly and Bruno Fernandez. They have quality players, but it's just not clicking. Clicked at the end, but the fans would want to see consistency. I don't want to see consistency. I'm a City fan. <laughs> I don't want to see consistency, but the fans would want to see consistency for sure. I think where Brentford missed the trick here, I think they defended well. They kept United at bay for the most part, but they missed the trick when they did not get that second goal. If they had gotten that second goal, things would have been... Way more difficult for United to come back. And I think they would have walked away with at least a point. Something from the game. But they walk away with nothing. And Brentford's, they, they've been going. To, if, if, if there's a form chart in the league right now, I think Brentford would be amongst the relegated teams. Because that's how they've looked. They, they, they have not looked good at all. For the, for the Brentford, I think, have, they only won one game. Four draws. Do have seven points after eight matches. Which isn't bad. But they need to start, you know, getting those W's. Indeed. For sure. So, look. With that being said, we are going to keep it moving. United did bounce back from their midweek loss in the Champions League. So, that's a positive for them, for sure. So, Crystal Palace, nil. Nottingham Forest, nil. 
didn't watch the game, didn't watch the highlights package. And for, from looking at the stats, it looked as if um, Nottingham Forest had more of a chance. It's 16 5 on target. Crystal Palace, 8 shots, 2 on target. Seems like it was a fairly even game, well poised between the two sides, and a point deserved for each team, I guess. But there ain't much I could say about this, but it's a big point for Forrest. You don't really worry too much about Crystal Palace. They're a team that's that's going to be in the Premier League. <laughs> They're going to come in 12th, 13th or so, 14th maybe. They're going to win some games you never expected them to win. They're going to throw away winning positions. They, they're just that type of team. You see what I'm saying? And they made themselves a staple of the Premier League for the most part. But for Forrest, this is a good point for them because, you know, they came back to the Premier League after a very long hiatus last season, survived. And for them to still be thriving this season is also a very good sign. So they have nine points, two wins, three draws, and three losses. Solid, solid start. And they're 13th. Crystal Palace are ninth with 12 points. So they ain't got nothing to worry about, man. Just another game, and I think it's a good result for both teams. So... We are going to keep it moving. So, the next game. West Ham to Newcastle 2. True second, 8th minute. Isaac 57th and 61st. 62nd, I mean. And then Mohamed Kudus off the bench to score the winner. Shot through a, a body of players and beat the goalkeeper, Nick Pope, there. So... Good draw for for the Hammers. And for Newcastle, they, they, they would feel like they should have won this game, having gotten those two goals back and they were stamping their authority on the game. They they, they, sh they would feel like they should have defended well, well enough to walk away with all three points here. So cause that was a very, you know, um, you don't want to say lucky, but for Kudos to hit that ball through all those players, like a, a forest of players, and it not hit one of them and go out for like a corner, you know, and beat the keeper. Look, got to be on your side there. So, it's a good, good point for West Ham because Newcastle just coming off of smashing up PSG 4-1 and you get a point. It's a great result. And West Ham's been playing very, very well this season. You got to give it to the Hammers, man. You know, you can't discount what they've done this season for sure. So, um, guys, in terms of the table, in terms of the table, remember, we're not, we're not going to stay forever talking about these matches, of course. West Ham 7th, 14 points. Newcastle 8th, 13 points. Four wins apiece for both sides this season. Solid, solid start, if you ask me, going into the second international break this season. I bet there's more that I could touch on, more that I could talk about, but I did not watch this game so it's unfair to me, unfair for me to actually act like I watched the game. So we're going to keep it moving. Wolves 1, Aston Villa 1. Good result for Wolves. They're picking up these points. Win against Man City last week and a draw again against an informed Aston Villa team. With Huang Hee Chan on the score sheet once again. Par Torres with a tap in. Close range, 55th minute. Mario Lamina sent off. Second yellow in the 94th there. So, good on Wolves to walk away with one point from the match there. So, um, uh, as I said numerous times, they've played well without any luck. And they didn't pick up some results where they should have. So, this, this should definitely be a positive. They're 14th. Eight points. You know, not a whole lot of points, but still... They got a little gap between them and the relegation teams, but only one win. A win, a draw, you know, could change all that for those teams down at the bottom. And if, you know, the opposite results happen for Wolves. So, two wins, two draws. Not a bad start to the season. Eight games. As for Villa, they're fifth. Very, very impressive. 16 points, two losses, a draw, and... Five wins this season. So that's their first draw of the season. And they are pretty much on the road. So you got to give them a lot, a lot of credit there. They play during the middle of the week as well. So they play Thursday night. So quality stuff 
from Aston Villa. It's a team I, I do like. I like their squad, you know what I mean? They got a lot of depth. They got some very exciting players. And they're a good team to watch, man. So, we are going to keep it moving for sure. I think we only got about two matches left to talk about. Don't want to be super, super long today. Let me make sure. Everton 3, Bournemouth nil. Almost forgot that game. That's more like it, Everton. I think this is their first home win this season. First home win for, for a while. They haven't been playing well at home at all. James Garner, 8 minute. Jack Harrison, 37 minute. And Dokori again in the 68 minute. I did talk about players needing to step up. Players like Harrison. That's a player who I actually identified. And um, Matt Neal as well. I, I identified. So I think Matt Neal had a solid game from the little highlight package that I saw. And convincing win for Everton over Bournemouth. The Cherries. Bournemouth are struggling. As I said, I think one of the first managers that could be sacked is that Bournemouth manager. Don't know if they're going to sack him or they're going to give him time, but we shall see. But this this win would do a, do Everton a whole lot of good. Their confidence boosted big time from this win. So, look, Everton is 16, 7 points, only their second win of the season. And for Bournemouth, no wins yet. And they're 19th with three points this season, all draws. So, quality stuff from the Toffees. So, um, guys, only two matches left to talk about. Oh, man. Let's talk. Let's talk. Arsenal won, Man City nil. I'm not going to go on forever because video is already 26 minutes long i didn't know it was already 26 minutes i thought i was doing extra good when it comes to time but uh martinelli in the 86 minute the game's only goal credit to arsenal i think they were the better team today and while watching the game I th the commentators were saying oh you know you know city's gonna go on to you know look like a team that would most likely win the game City look more solid, but look, to keep a team like Manchester City at bay and still be a threat at times, it's not an easy thing to do. Arsenal, they outshot us and they had a lot of the ball. 49%, they had 12 shots, two on target, while for City, only four shots, one on target. That is poor. You're telling me the whole game, whole game, you could only muster four shots, four that is very poor, man. That is that is not poor. That is pitiful, if you ask me. And pathetic. So you got to give credit to that Arsenal team that kept Manchester City at bay. Stifled us. Snuffed us out every time we tried to go forward. Starved Erling Haaland off the ball. Negated the threat of Julian Alvarez, Phil Foden, and Bernardo Silva. And managed to bring on three subs there in the late there. And for all of them to link up. Party, Havertz, Martinelli, and to score. For Chiochos goal to the header, you know, of Nathan Ake's head. They you know you need luck on your going your way, but you have to put yourself in a position to to shoot. You make your own luck and deserve victory. Deserved. Deserved. I don't think Arsenal fans should feel like they got one up on City now. First win in about eight years in the Premier League. Inflicting back-to-back -back losses at Manchester City for the first time in five years as well. So, a little bit of history there being created. But at the same time, at the same time, guys, I don't think Arsenal should get carried away with this win. It's a good result. It's a good notch in Arteta's, you know, belt. You see what I'm saying? A nice stripe. They have on your shoulder beating the teacher Pep Guardiola and basically conquering the final frontier because I think Man City were like the only team that Arteta needed to beat since he took charge of Arsenal and they got their win and we couldn't we, we had nothing we had nothing to reply you know what I mean but I don't want to make excuses or anything but Arsenal weren't without Bukayo Saka. Let's just put it that way. No Saka, no Martinelli at the start. 
how how we didn't manage to to beat these guys or at least walk away with a point but this is where some of the cracks in city's team is showing no kevin de bruyne you got to start working on a kevin de bruyne replacement you know players like jamal musiala has been mentioned we have to start get we, we got to get someone in and start honing them because when kevin de bruyne eventually moves on we're going to struggle. The creative side of the game was lacking big time today. And you need that player like Kevin De Bruyne. And he, if he's not present, there should be a readily replacement player that could just slot in. And we don't have someone of Kevin De, Bru De Bruyne's ilk in the team. I know Alvarez has stepped up. Foden has stepped up. But these guys are no Kevin De Bruyne. You know what I mean? Kevin De Bruyne is genuinely two-footed. These guys are not. You see, we miss Rodri big time, and I, and I hope he learned from this numbskull mistake that he made trying to put hands on a player. Come on, man. You don't put hands on nobody. Even at my job, you know not to put hands on anybody. You could talk. You could talk, but don't, the moment you put your hands on somebody, you're going to get fired. You're going to see a red card, and that's what happened. So give it up to Arsenal. Stayed compact. Gabriel, Saliba, they stayed tight, kept Erling Haaland quiet. They were a little, you know, that time when um, Raya, he almost allowed Julian Alvarez to score. That was one of the closest we got to scoring. There was a, a Vardial shot that Declan Rice cleared off the line. Give it up to Declan Rice as well. His influence is definitely felt today. You know, so... We tried. We brought on Doku. No Grealish, thank God. No Calvin Phillips. This, this is the game where these guys are supposed to be able to put their hands up and actually help the team win. Nowhere to be found. Big talking point. I almost forgot. That's why I like to write things down, but I haven't been writing anything down. Kovacic. Potential red card. Only given a yellow. Guys, let me be honest. Let me be honest, the Premier League, very inconsistent. I think Kovacic should have been sent off. He should have got a red. Kovacic should have got a red card today. No cap, red card. He should have got it. Should have gotten a red card. That yellow card should have been upgraded to a red. And maybe we would have definitely lost the game and it would have been it would have felt a little different. You see what I mean? Why why drag it on to the 86th minute only to lose? You know what I'm saying? So, look. Kovacic should have been sent off. And he got, he, he made another tackle that I think he, he could have gotten a potential yellow card to make it a second yellow and got sent off. Referee didn't give him. You see what I'm saying? Who was that? Oliver? Poor referee. Poor referee. Not because it's my team. It's only right. I'm going to be fair. Kovacic should not have been on the field. Should have seen the red. We keep it a hundred percent. Should have should have seen the red, and we should have lost the game by about two, three goals. So in hindsight, when you really look back at it, we we're lucky not to go down to ten men, and we we're lucky that we stayed in the game that long. Not that Arsenal threatened on many, many occasions. A lot of the shots were like wayward, but it outshot us, and they got that tell. They they, they inflicted that telling blow at the end. So, losing back-to-back -back games is not something you characterize with Manchester City at all. But it happened, man. It happened. But I have to say, because we won the first six games of the season, it's not really being felt that much. You see what I mean? Because we're still, what, third? 18 points behind Arsenal and Spurs, which is not bad. Eight games, 18 points. Okay, third, not bad. Not bad. They're not, they're not far ahead. They're not far ahead. And we remember what happened last season. We know what happened seasons before. The teams were far ahead and we, we caught them. So once you stay in the mix, everything's going to be okay. Arsenal is second with 20 points. You know, credit to them. I'm going to give them the credit. I'm not convinced that they're going to win the title. I'm really not convinced. But if they are going to win the title... These are the results that they need to pick up on a more consistent basis. Winning teams like Manchester City, beating Spurs, beating Liverpool, beating the Uniteds, beating the, um, the Chelsea's, and also 
winning games that you must win, like Everton. So I'm going to leave it right there. Congrats to um, Arteta. Congrats to Arsenal. Quality, quality performance. I'm going to leave it right there. And guys, last but not least, Liverpool, Brighton, 2-2. Two -two. Adingra, 20th minute. This guy's a live wire. We talked a lot about Mitoma, but this guy has stepped up. When Mitoma and, and Sully March doesn't step up, he steps up. So, really, really good um, good goal. Mistake by Liverpool. Mistake. Van Dijk, I think, passed. You know, they try to pass the ball out the back. Van Dijk tried to pick up Alexis McAllister, the former Brighton boy. And he sold him short. Adingra stole the ball and Allison, he weren't quick, he wasn't quick enough back to his goal. And Adingra put in. Very good goal. State switched on. Very good goal. Salah, 48th minute. Equalizer. Good goal. Good team goal there by Liverpool. Back in the game. And Liverpool went ahead through a penalty in the 41st minute. Player brought down um, in the box there, pulled back. And of course, I think that was Shubba Sly, wasn't it? And Salah stepped up, put it in the back of the net. Good penalty. 2 1 Liverpool. And at that moment, I'm saying, oh man, these guys are so lucky. They always go behind and they find a way to come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They always find a way to come back. And look again, they're coming back in the game. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Gavin Burke did have a really good chance to score where he hit the, 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 the crossbar. You know, I think there were a few more opportunities. Liverpool had 14 shots, 4 on target. Same thing for Brighton. 14 shots, 3 on target. But Brighton are a dangerous team. Dangerous. Liverpool give away a free kick in a very dangerous position. Didn't defend it well. And Lewis Dunk put in. 2-0. Brighton could have, or maybe at, that, at the point in the game when it happened, you could say they should have won the game. João Pedro, man. How are you missing these? This is, that was a sitter. Sitter. Right in front of the goal, you laying back. Sky in the ball. Come on, man. So, positive stuff for Brighton. You know, they've suffered a few setbacks lately. Good join the, the, the Europa League during the week. And another good draw on the weekend here against one of the more informed team in the league in Liverpool. So, Liverpool go in two games without a win. The loss, a controversial loss against Spurs and this draw against Brighton. Not a great result, but still, guys, it's early times and Liverpool have seven points. They're fourth. So, I don't think it's, there's no need to panic. There's no need to have any type of um, unnecessary criticism of the team. You know what I'm saying? Any team that's doing well right now, you don't need to criticize because guess what? Liverpool only three points behind Spurs and Arsenal, one point behind Manchester City. So if you use City as a benchmark, you're doing fine. You're doing very, very fine. And guys, another thing um, before I go. I listened back. I was listening to the freaking VR audio. Oh man, that was a that was a mess, man. They messed up. They really messed up. And even when play continued, they were saying, "Stop the game! Stop the game!" It wasn't a, you know. So, yeah, that was a that was a cluster, man. <laughs> that was a cluster. So, who knows? Maybe Liverpool would have still lost the game, but that was some poor officiating. When it comes to um, that whole Luis Diaz um, goal there that he scored against Spurs. Should have stood. Liverpool should have went up and who knows what would have happened. Maybe they would have won. Maybe they would have lost. Maybe they would have walked away with a point. But all in all, man, um, I think Brighton would walk away the happier of the two teams with the draw. And Liverpool would feel more like points dropped than a point gained. Let me shout out Baleba. He was very good on the day. Very, very solid performance, I have to say. And, uh, you know, Adingra was very good. You know, um, Evan Ferguson didn't really cast his spell over the game. He's had a rough couple games, I have to say. But um, all in all, it was a good watch. 
Definitely was a good watch. Give it up to Brighton. Because who would have thought that Brighton would be competing, competing against the likes of Liverpool? You see what I mean? So quality, quality, quality um match there. I think um Deserby did receive a yellow where he thought that the Van Dyke handball should have been given, but it hit Van Dyke's leg up to the arm. Those are not given. Maybe in the Champions League, but not in the Premier League. Not in the Premier League at all. So yeah, not much more to really talk about. You see? Yeah, not much to really talk about. I've talked a lot, 40 minutes gone already. And uh, yeah, I do appreciate you guys watching this one. And I'm glad that I I did it. I'm glad that I talked about the matches, get it out the way, and then we move on. Talk international football, maybe talk some other things. But I just want to be consistent with the channel, man. You know, I, I don't want to get into the funk of not uploading again and then you know <laughs> i go like freaking two weeks without uploading i don't want that to happen so guys where i'm gonna leave it man um in terms of liverpool they are currently fourth 17 points and brighton a sixth with 16 points so very very solid what's coming up next after the international break let's just run through those fixtures man um October the 21st, guys. Liverpool, Everton, Merseyside Derby, Brentford, Burnley, Bournemouth, Wolves, Nottingham Forest, Luton. I like all these games. Man City, Brighton. Could Brighton upset the champions? Newcastle Palace, Chelsea, Arsenal in a big London derby. Sheffield host Man United. Aston Villa host West Ham. And Spurs take on Fulham in another London derby there. So, um... Yeah, guys, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm sick. I'm a bit thirsty. My water is done. Got a little bit here. But um, thanks, man. Thanks for watching. And also, big shout out to Michael. Can't remember his last name, but he told me. But Michael, I met him in the McDonald's. I went to pick up some food. And I met him in the McDonald's. And he said, hey, I know you from somewhere. You Dominic? I'm like, oh, man, you got me. So yeah, he's he was asking why I'm not uploading like I used to, but I'm like I'm I've been uploading. I went live just the other day. So if you're watching this, Michael, big up yourself. Nice, nice meeting you, man. He's a Liverpool fan as well. So nice meeting you. So and thanks for actually saying hi because some people would know me and not say hi. And also, I'm someone else I went to this food truck <laughs> called King Suvlaki, one of my favorite, you know food well it's the only food truck i ever bought from i think but it's a greek food truck and i love their food and he also said he saw me as well so i was like whoa man your boy is popular i'm famous but guys thanks again i'm your boy dumb like the video if you haven't yet done so let me never miss any major talking points down below i'm not perfect i'm pretty sure i'm gonna miss things but um yeah all off the top straight from the heart and guys, pretty boy Dom, until my next one, peace out. Rich Squad. Peace.